Joes. Welcome to the Regular Joes Podcast. I'm Dave Pisani. I'm Barry Kay. And I'm Todd Pleasant. Okay, I know every week for the past three weeks or four weeks, the the opening has been completely different than you're normally, and we're going to do that again differently this week. So, as we sit here, last night the final trailer for The Rise of Skywalker came out. For some fucked up reason, Todd (laughs) refused to watch it. I don't know why, but that's fine. So... And, and, and I just, you know, I, I, know, I gotta say, what got me to peer pressure, and I just watched it. So, but what, what, what got me though it. is the peer pressure for me and you last night had no effect. Three people at work asked him what he thought, and that made him no. Want you to know, watch it. it was it was starting getting it was no, it wasn't that there. It was it was just starting to get annoying because people. What did you think? What did you think? And I was like, I don't see it. But you're, like, you, first of all, okay, we love you and all that, but you've been so lukewarm on Star Wars, and then. You're like, I'm cutting myself off. Like, you're not learning anything from this trailer. I don't know why you picked this moment to sort of do that. Because but it's, we're in the zone. It's just like there's no, yeah. The zone we're starts after zone. this trailer. Yes, that's right. when the zone starts. So, Todd, we're going to talk about it, obviously. Todd yeah. watched it, left our our view, came back with his Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker t-shirt. So, <laughs> yes. I'm assuming he enjoyed the, the trailer. Yeah, he, I drank the Kool-Aid. Um, I, I like that. Yes, it I I feel diff- all I new feel footage. Basically. Very very encouraged by what we just saw. It it's a lot less. You know, it does it, it's a lot less ambiguous than the other one. You can't. I don't think they, they give you a lot here to try to figure out what's going on. It's just a little. They give quick you zero, which things. is actually. And I like that. I, like I, I want to see things that I, I'm, the hair in the back of my neck stood up that's what i'm looking for i don't oh, want to know I, I, okay, the, the millennium falcon in front of that sea of ships yeah was the was the thing for me that was just like whoa and well and, and because you've only watched it once and you haven't processed it watch it again the ship right next to the falcon to the right is the ghost oh nice nice <laughs> also the um Seeing the Y wing go up for the star, you know, go up for the below the star destroyer. There were so Y wings like, and B wings in that trailer. Yeah, no, that's great. It was and that awesome that that uh, star destroyer coming out of I think dirt or I think it's water? I think it's ice. Oh, I, I thought ice. that was, was water. I was thinking I, I had a little flashback to uh, um, Star Trek Beyond, and I was thinking like. But I well, guess Todd, could, Todd's only watched it once. I've watched it seven times. I think it's ice. <laughs> okay, if, I thought if, it was I mean, Earth. If, I've if watched they, it like put three it this times. way: if these things can survive being in space, they could be pretty much anywhere. The question is, could they take off an atmosphere? So I guess we I'm know that. I'm curious. Now. For some reason, I feel like this thing has been buried like the tripods from War of the Worlds, and that's where the Emperor has been hanging out for thirty years. I don't know. Does anyone get that sense? He's definitely been hanging out somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Now, uh, but, another thing that, that you guys might not have picked up on, that empty throne that they show um, mm-hmm. is actually desi- a, a design. A Macqu- Ralph McQuarrie design from a bazillion years ago. Yes, it's a McQuarrie design from before Return of the Jedi. So that's yeah. actually kind of cool that they went back and used that. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. But there's also a I shot in there that goes point. by really quick of Kylo and Rey fighting in front of the Emperor's throne from Return of the Jedi and the destroyed Death Star, which is an awesome shot too. So, hmm. oh, I didn't, gra- I didn't gather that. I didn't pick that up. No, well, you got to watch it seven times. <laughs> like, uh, apparently so. <laughs> There's a lot of cool um, stuff I picked up on, and then what's really funny is my son Joshua was texting me all day because I guess him and his friends were talking about it at school. Um, there's a scene where Ray and Kylo are fighting in a white environment that looks very imperial, um, and they're like smashing something that, apart. And Ray's actually yeah, got yeah. A, a lightsaber in one hand and a dagger in the other hand. If you like, oh. look at it closely, it's kind of cool. So that I love like, the fact that they showed like a statue of Darth Vader or something. It it, I mean, it looks like it could be, um, yeah. or it could be some type of stand. I mean. I got to imagine that the it's very, melted they cut it helmet in a way of you Vader really can't tell. is gone, but so but it, yeah, it kind of looked like it could be Vader or something. Um, 
But I really like that they showed a, a lot of new footage, but it's also it's new footage of some of the scenes we've already seen. They're really not showing us a whole lot of new stuff here, but it's enough. I mean, they're never going to give the plot away of this movie. No, they're not. Trailer, they're smart, I gotta say, nor would I want like, them to. This was like a teaser on Eleven. Um, it just there was because there was nothing in terms of telegraphing. It was just look at all this cool shit, and now we have yeah. more. That's what it's supposed. To, that's what it should be. Oh, I know How that, but I'm just saying. We, we've were also they... seen. Let's face it. I mean, they 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 did a trailer that had scenes in it that we never saw in mm. in Rogue One. So this this is you know this this felt really good. It just it seemed like you were just kind of back into it and and. Um, it's... I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I just got a text from Josh, who's I guess watching it again, and he says. In that scene with C-3PO, there's a droid from the Clone Wars behind C-3PO. Oh. <laughs> so he's, he's analyzing that it. That was a little weird. I, do you get the sense they're going to off C-3PO? <clears throat> like, why is he saying one last time? What's all that about? My guess on that one is that they, they need to do something with him that maybe he might not come back uh, yeah, from I or think something. That, that little uh, thing attached to his neck is like tying him into some kind of system or something. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. first thought, he was being repaired, but then you see wires going into him. I feel I think, like he's being tied into something, yeah. Yeah, I think he's like being attached to the security system or something like that. And well, they There's an action figure him. that came out <laughs> on Force Friday of C-3PO with Chewbacca's bandolier and Chewbacca's bowcaster. So hmm. okay. something happens with 3PO. I think 3PO has more to do in this movie than he's had to do in a long time based just on that. I mean, that's not like a fantasy thing. That's apparently a figure from the movie. Interesting. And it's, I found it interesting. We, I thought we'd see, maybe we'd see Carrie Russell or you did, uh, those briefly. couple of other people. Did we see her? With her helmet on. She's actually in that scene with 3PO all the way to the left. She's standing there with She's, the helmet I didn't, on. I didn't stop and analyze it like yeah. I was supposed to, I guess. I, I think, I also, there's an incredible amount of environments in this thing. I mean, yeah. This is, I mean, how many places kind of, were they kind of, fighting with the lightsabers? Right, but we've kind of got the impression. Multiple. Mean, but it starts with her running in a jungle, you know. And is that Dagobah. I I don't know. I think I don't it's think Endor. It's, I, I was think I think so too. Probably um, it's a little less, a lot less swampy than Dagobah. But yeah, we, that's true. We haven't, but I mean, been everywhere. There are only I mean, a handful of places where wreckage of a Death Star would be found. One would be around Yavin Four, and one would be around the forest moon of Endor, because those are the two places they blew up. So that is a really, really good point. Yep. I hadn't thought of that. Well, that's interesting because in theory, that's a good place for the emperor to be. He could be buried, you know, or whatever emperor on Endor. should have gone down with that Death Star. So. Interesting. Yeah. You know, again, well, I, I like, they... I like the dialogue. I like that. It's all voiceover, <clears throat> mostly voiceover anyway. Um, and I really like. That Luke, I mean, I wrote down Luke's line because he says, confronting fear is a destiny of a Jedi. Your destiny and the Force will be with you. And then Leia says, always. But mm -hmm. that sounds like the Luke Skywalker that we know. That doesn't sound like the Luke Skywalker that went into hiding on a cave because his nephew was emo. So, like, it sounds like we've been hoping J.J. would restore these characters uh, to the right uh, tone. And, it's you know, just from that one line, that's, that's, that's an elder... Luke Skywalker, who is, you know, teaching Ray from, you know, maybe he's a from beyond now, or, but we'll find out. But that sounds like dialogue there, that Luke Skywalker would deliver. Do we know what the yeah. running time of this film is? Yes. Two hours, 35 wait, minutes. 155 minutes. Yeah, it's 235. Two hours and 35 minutes. Okay, that's acceptable. They got a lot to cover. I wish it was longer. They got a lot to cover. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely the longest film they've ever made. Yeah, yeah, it's by about ten minutes, I think. Yeah. yeah. So was there? And I again, I I wanted to just listen to the audio with like headphones. Was there any? You know how in that scene downstairs in the basement of that Maz Kanata place, you hear all those voices. I was curious if there's a like any other voices sort of sneak into this. Um, that I didn't know, hear. Like I didn't hear any of Obi Wan that. or anybody. Might be interesting because some I I didn't read it and it felt like clickbait. Someone said something about you know all multiple force ghosts or something 
Um, I didn't I didn't get that sense. I was wondering if they were pulling it out of this trailer or it was just a bunch of nonsense. I don't think there's anything in the trailer with that. You know, I, I again I I don't I think that they want to get people excited and they want to sell a lot of pre-sale tickets, but they don't want to give away anything critical in this trailer. Yeah, they're I, smart. I mean, they've they've they broke Endgame's record for pre-sale tickets already, so yep. I I don't think they were too worried about that. But but I do think it's about I think they've got they've got to get a huge buzz build up going um, because the people that are are jazzed for this are going to be going anyways. They're going to be they'll do whatever, but they need to make this the the event for December. Yeah, and, I mean they got to be smart. I think you know they're two months out, and you know they definitely you know they're doing more than they did for solo. That's for sure. And there's a bunch of other stuff. And I've just you know they had a whole thing on Good Morning America where they're doing one of those um, uh, what's that thing we've always we joined the you know the Omaze oh, or Omaze, whatever yeah. Force for Force for Change or whatever. There's hopefully they really just put. A ton behind this. They really need to get out there yeah. with it. Well, and I hope you mentioned Endgame. I hope that their bar for success of this isn't trying to beat Endgame because, you know, I, I it, it's so unobtainable. I mean, it'd be great if it did. I guess for Disney, I, it doesn't matter to me. I just, I just want it to be good. I just really want it to I, be good. No one I sees can't it. See it. I, I honestly can't I see, see it, it beating Endgame. I, I, no. I bet it's gonna, it's gonna do extremely well. And it's going to be the best. It's going to do the best of the modern films. Um, yeah. No, this I is, this is to, really, to really encouraging. What's that? Oh, they. This, I said I just needed to stick the landing. I, I really don't want to come away from this feeling any of what I felt after the last one. I mean, it. Otherwise, for it. me, I was going to say you kidding? after the last one, you were, you spent two years trying to convince us it was good. No, um, I, the way I feel now senses. is not the way I want. I want to be able to go. Yeah, there's there's uh, there's eight really good movies and one you know not so great movie. I, I just this yeah. needs to be a, a fitting ending. And JJ's out there, oh. talk. I mean, talking shit, but saying like, you know, w- w- I forget. I texted you whatever the quote was, but he's like, yeah, we're not messing around. We're not screwing around. Was his quote? That's what it was. We're not screwing around. He knows what this. he's got to do. He, he, know, he it's does. Not and like that's, some jerk off he, here. He putting this has. Thing together. He has the most on his shoulders right now he is the biggest he is the biggest rock the move since before empire okay but because the tone of empire this had to live even... up to star wars and he's he's gotta he's gotta finish this up right and the tone of it feels right though that, based on the trail. A tongue hung, hung, hung on empire being done well it ended up being better than i think a lot of us imagined this was this is that same kind of thing. This can't be a this can't be a movie that people walk out with mixed feelings on. You can't. I mean, that's the thing. You think and you think of all these. You know, again, they're not the scope of Star Wars, but look at like the Game of Thrones and things. You can't end this where no, you can't. The, and and this is why people I mean, are divided one of the on that, it. It's it's got a it's got even a huge the Game of Thrones cast delivery. now are talking about how disappointing they, right. it was and it, how sad it, they feel true, for the fans. The thing is. The the thing is with this though is they and various other I say they I mean Disney various other people have spent spent a considerable amount of time I'm like deflecting and throwing shit back on on fans and saying they're unreasonable and doing all this kind of stuff they've got fences to mend now this has got to be a movie that pleases eighty five percent of the people who walk in there and and that's that's going to be tough. Well, but I do it's think that they're at a point now where they've got to be fairly close to locking the film, and JJ knows what he has. Oh my now. God, yes, yeah. So, yeah. like, for him to be out is saying, is JJ self-aware though? I mean, I feel like I, I think that's one of the thing that makes him a great producer director. Him and Favreau, and you know, the handful of people out there, and you know, there's there's. I don't know if there's another person in the world I'd put this in their hands to pull oh, this I, thing off. Oh, I agree entirely. I agree entirely. And the thing is, too, this is not like Ron Howard coming in as a fixer and trying to make something out of what he had and then shooting half a movie again and stitching it together. You know, they handed this over to him, and he, he picked up the ball and, and made decisions, and, and, you know, he wasn't in the best starting place, 
but I, I, have, I have a high degree of confidence that he can pull us off. But j- just like Endgame, how like you left Endgame feeling totally fulfilled, even knowing full well that if you really, really thought about some of the details, it didn't all make sense, but that's okay. And I still feel that that's okay. And I'll feel the same way about this. If they can at least check all the right boxes, if they don't tie everything up and if everything's not explained or if everything doesn't perfectly tie together, I'll be okay. It just needs yeah. to feel no, it's like kind of, a you're fitting right. Here's the thing, comparison. and this, this does go back to the Game of Thrones thing, is it it's okay for it not to be what you wanted. It just can't feel wrong. Okay? Mm-hmm. And that's what we got last time. Okay? It wasn't just that it wasn't what we were expecting or wasn't what we were wanted, and that's the, the shit that we had thrown back at us for two years. It was that it didn't feel right, okay? And that that is exactly what happened with Game of Thrones. I think, like, three more episodes to end up where they ended up in Game of Thrones. People could have lived with that a little bit more. But it just, you know, the pace just went, like, again, we don't have to go back into that. But yeah. I, I think it just wasn't, you, you needed a little absorption. And, and um this, What's amazing I, I on think, that, though, is that they're even now saying, oh, well, we were really rushed. It's like, you had a oh, yeah. year and a half between seasons. You, they were, you but they also had, you? They had, I mean, there's there's something like 27 plot lines they didn't resolve in that show. Okay. It's, I mean, yeah, they, they should have done a full season and they should have gone. Are you seriously going to knock that over, dog? But but even on and again I don't want to get too hung up on Game of Thrones but even if they left twenty seven plot lines unanswered the ones that they did answer needed to needed to land properly and they didn't but and else they, didn't. they yeah. every single thing they wrapped up needed more time than it had it was given and that's what mm. I'm saying is it's got to feel right okay and it's it, it's like no. you know it needs to do what Endgame did and I just watched Endgame again this weekend and you had a satisfying conclusion while still being i'm not sure sad's the right word well sure sad i mean there's things that God, you know I'm, I'm still in mourning but yeah got you but <laughs> yeah they were resolved certainly spoilers you know even cap story hate to see no more cap hate to see no more iron man blah 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 black widow but it was a, a worthy conclusion and boy they got to pull this off yeah i agree we trust well, you. We'll know okay. soon enough. We've but all got tickets, right? The other thing, right? too, though, is that, I mean, this is also, you know, this is the end of the story. And they've said this over and over again. Okay. So if it's not the end of the story for all of these characters, there's got to be some significant wrap up. You know, if we're, if oh, there's totally, potentiality to see these characters he's totally again. said that. But I, I okay. think in the yeah. same way Return of the Jedi felt like an ending, I think this is going to feel like an ending. And then if five years from now, six years from now, we get another Ray story, then that's, I think that's fine. But yeah, the, I, they're certainly not going to leave it hanging on any kind of cliffhanger or o- Oh, no, totally no, no. What I'm saying is if this is this is going to defend, if this is the end of the Skywalker saga, okay, I'm okay with some of these people moving forward, but that, that has to mean something. So yeah. here's yeah. an interesting thought. This is the final trailer for a movie called The Rise of Skywalker, and we didn't see a single Skywalker in this trailer. We heard one voice. That we know of. That we, well, we heard Luke's voice. We I'm don't saying, consider Leia a Skywalker? Skywalker? I don't know. What was that, Todd? We don't consider Leia a Skywalker? Well, not really. She's an Organa. She's... I guess she's a Skywalker. Yeah, she's, a, awesome. yeah, she's a Skywalker. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't she's know. Born All right, Skywalker. so we, okay, we saw her for, right, for half. We a could second. do this. We could just do the whole show about this. So we won't. We won't. But uh, we did all get our tickets. I was very happy with the ticket situation. Me too. Eight o'clock. I was on Alamo. Alamo crashed last year. I couldn't get tickets until after midnight, and they I didn't get them until Sunday because they were sold out. But eight o'clock, boom! I was fifth in line. Got my tickets Thursday, 7.45. Barry, I know you the same. Yeah, I've got uh, Thursday at 6 p.m., which is the spot I was trying to get the last two movies, and I couldn't. And then as backup, I also bought Sunday, because I'm assuming I'm going to love it, and I'm going back on Sunday. Yeah, I, I, got, I, have, um, I have Thursday at 7. <laughs> and in, in the theater, the big theater where we see it with the big kind of stadium seats and stuff, they've got um, – there's like a bar. There's like an aisle, a middle aisle that runs through the – you know, mm-hmm. there's a – 
front section and then this center aisle. Yeah. And then the back section. And I, I like being right on that bar because you have like mm-hmm. like a foot extra leg room and nobody can sit in front of you. And we got the seats right on the bar. So yeah. And I was able great. to pick the, the, the version of the showing that I wanted, which was X Plus, which is the, the best uh, screen that I have access to, Dolby Atmos, and 2D. I did not want 3D. So... And I got, I got. I the, can't believe they're still making 3D movies. I mean, people go see that still. They are even doing 4D by me, where the seats move and they spray you in the face with water and all this think, crap. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen a 3D movie. In I've never gone to see one. I mean, thank God Alamo doesn't even you show. Did, you 3D didn't see movies. Avatar in 3D. Oh, that was the last 3D movie. Okay. So. Yeah, well, sometimes I have no choice, but this one I saw that the yeah, 6 I gotta PM, say, which was I, the... I think I saw um, the first um, the Harry Potter spinoff. Um, oh, Fantastic Beasts! The... Yes, I think I saw in... that in 3D because I didn't have another choice. But yeah, yeah, I won't, I won't choose. No, I'm, anyway. I'm, I'm very happy with with the way the ticket thing worked out and how easy it was Me to get too. them. And yeah. looking forward to it now. I was now tempted... it's just a waiting game and, and avoiding all the spoilers and bullshit. Mm. Anyway, okay, and let's go random since we were. I'm going to jump into random. Please do because I, huh, I, I, we're picking up another story. So another one of these old bastards is bashing the Marvel movies. That was oh mine. my god! Yeah. That was that was totally. I was going to go there, but please do. Yes, Francis Ford Coppola went to call them despicable. Now. Mm-hmm. I I think Scorsese says he's seen a couple. I don't think Francis Ford Coppola. I think there was something about you know they're all the same, and you know they're despicable. I have three words: Godfather Three. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, so I've I've got his exact made... quotes. If you want to hear them, I've got I wrote them down. Nah, I don't know that we need to hear. We don't. So need let to me ask you this: time, but... Do they think Star Wars films are despicable? Well, no, it's his buddy. I know that's well, what yeah, I'm saying. If it wasn't for saying, Star Wars, and Coppola he's actually the one that challenged George anything. to make a commercial film, right? I mean, George was it, going you know, to make I, something else, and he said, "Do that, but first, I dare you, I challenge you, go make something, you know, totally commercial and fun." And James Gunn had a very well put together uh, response on Instagram. It's in the it's in the Dropbox under episode three. Uh, episode three hundred nine, uh, if you if you haven't seen it, but he basically said, you know, every every generation doesn't like the movies of the next genera- of the of the next generation. You know, there were bad people didn't like gangster movies. But the generation before that didn't like the westerns when they first c- came out. So th- there's this sort of not understanding, right? And and the thing that you know, the picture he put is of Rocket. When he's talking to Groot, when Groot makes the the ball and they're, he's yeah. going to kill himself, I got to say, if this guy it was, calls himself a filmmaker with an imagination, the, the the you've got De Niro in your movies or you've got Al Pacino in your movies, they, they took basically pixels and built fully evolved characters with yeah. heart and and everything that is equally as developed as any characters in movies and if you can't look past that it's a raccoon and the 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 complexity of those characters and you're just a jerk off well but he's he's it, saying that those are basically they're turning theaters into theme parks and amusement parks it's it's okay but you know what the difference is okay he, films that films of the type that he considers cinema are turning theaters into parking lots, okay? Well, no, they're turning and, they're turning theaters into vacant lots. There's nobody no, but there. I'm saying it's like it's it, this is like, yeah, these things are keeping this industry alive. Now, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot bad, of really and good like, films that happen, okay? But these studios and these these businesses are being kept. Al- yes, there are films not being made because these are being made, but those films being made are not going to find critical audiences. So well, so just going back to to Martin Scorsese for a minute. One of the things that he said in the in which we we skipped over last week because we didn't want to go into the details, but he said uh, a big issue is the theater owners need to step up 
and allow a theater to show a film that are narrative films. A narrative film could be one long take for three hours. You know, there doesn't have to be a conventional beginning, middle, and end. Who the hell at this day and age wants to go to a theater and watch one scene for three hours? That, that's experimental film. That's independent film. That's the kind of thing that you go to art houses for. That's not what you go to a multiplex for. Nobody's going to do that. They need and to like get with down, the times. He's going to put down something like the Marvel movies, which have 24 movies spanning this whole complex story. And hey, while they're yeah. very good, the, you make the, the highest, same movie the highest rated over shit on over TV again. right now is reality TV. Has he seen the American public? Okay, it's like the, the, this is not a line of people who are dying to see a three-hour film of one take of a guy eating cereal. Okay. All right. So anyway. so here's another quote, and this one's from Coppola. And tell me what tell me what you think of this one. He says, he's right to expect that we learn something from cinema. We expect to gain something, some enlightenment, some knowledge, and some inspiration. The Marvel movies have been very inspirational. Like, you just have to be open to the concept. He's not open to anything. You gotta, you gotta have an imagination. He's, you know what this there's is? There's more Seriously, developed This is two old dudes characters. saying, get off my lawn. Okay? And, you know, the, the, the way to... The way to continue to be relevant is not to claim that you're you're more relevant than anything else. Um, it's it's yeah, yeah. I'm going to ban the Irishman. I'm not watching it. Barry, what do you got? That was all I had. I was actually going straight to okay. that. Todd, you have anything else? I do. So okay. it is with a heavy heart that I say this, but I, for two years now, I've been looking forward to the War of the Worlds. Okay, which is a BBC production that aired in Canada earlier this month and then New Zealand this week. I managed to get my hands on the the New Zealand version. It was it was shown in two parts. Really well made. The the creatures were fantastic. The walkers were amazing to look at. And those were like set dressing in some romantic story that sort of happened during War of the Worlds. L- listen to this description. This is the episode one description. In Edwardian England, George and Amy live privately as an unmarried couple, despite the disapproval of his, of his former wife and brother. Hostile Martians, armed with heat rays and poison gas, complicate their efforts to find marital bliss. What oh the God, fuck? Really? <laughs> okay. Seriously? I watched almost three hours of this thing. Okay, the best scene in War of the Worlds. Okay, in the book, the best scene in War of the Worlds was the is the HMS Thunderchild taking down the first Walker. When the Walker's crossing the Thames, the steamship rams it, takes it down. It's the first first victory by the humans, showing that they can be beaten. The crew sacrifices themselves. Okay, no, it's not in there. Okay, we have three hours of these free freaking people talking about their relationship okay it is bizarre and how much they love each other and how much they want to give it was just like i was sitting there like this has got to be a goddamn joke um sean watched it with me also and we were like texting back and forth and he were in the same place Uh, god bless him for getting through it i will not subject either of you to it again beautiful gorgeously filmed they captured the era perfectly. They had every piece on the board that they needed to make something which no one has ever done. A, a faithful period presentation of War of the Worlds. And this is, I, I, I'm just, I'm crushed. It, it's oh just, man, yeah. I know how much you were looking forward to this too. Oh my so. God. It's, and, and you tell you, you, you got to skim through it and look without the sound on. And just believe me, whenever they start talking, keep skimming. Um, but... The walkers are fantastic. The everything looks perfect. You know, all the lines of stupid British soldiers thinking they can shoot it. Everything happens the way it should happen. But the majority of this story is about George and Amy's relationship. Um, and that just seems like a misfire to me. That's like, oh my god! It was like I, I maybe that was the much greater audience, but. I just don't understand. Maybe they're um, trying to get the Downton Abbey. Crowd it, it's, I mean, it's like it's. But you know what? I watched Downton Abbey. Okay, this is I. I I'm an Anglophile. 
these these two things don't go together okay an edwardian like you know i mean this is almost like somebody doing one of these like sense and sensibility and zombies it's like <laughs> it, it was like an unintentional parody um just bizarre so in another week or so the next war of the worlds is coming out which is is um gabriel byrne is in it and it, that's a a series um that's airing in europe and um oh. so i will get that also but that's set in present day and um so but yeah this this is so say, basically go, what we're saying is the best version of war of the worlds is the tom cruise one no the best version of war of the worlds is the george powell 1953 version but the the, the uh this isn't that, even doesn't, in the that one doesn't have tom cruise running in it though no no yeah like, he's he, run he great he, yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> God, I, I just knew that it was going to cycle back to Tom Cruise somehow. Anyways, like I said, that's a good. Do you don't think that's a good movie? I like that movie. If and when, if and when you get an option to see this, don't. Or like I said, skim through it. Why don't we it, cut it, edit it ourselves? And anytime I talking, said that we'll to Sean the after the first night, Tom okay, Cruise he, running. I I wasn't going to get this deep into this, but okay, they did the Arrow thing where they intercut. A, a future timeline that they're cutting back and forth from from like five or six years in the future and all they do in the future is talk okay and it's like what the but is the shit? future is after the part of the story the future you know, is it, after the attack the future's after the attack and the earth is decimated and everyone's having a tough time living and all this kind of stuff and we don't care because they're still just moping around and it's like it it just you know the the aliens are defeated, but they pretty much soil the planet. Okay, it's it's not war. Okay, this is not war. The moving or moving is, on. Yeah, Any more random. You know what? I did have one other thing that I just wanted to mention back on the other topic, which I'm not going to belabor it. But I I don't I know neither of you saw the Joker. I, I actually saw the Joker, and it, it's a good movie for what it is. But it, it also kind of made me laugh because it is kind of like a takeoff, or it's so. It's an homage almost to like Martin Scorsese movies, and it came out right at the same time that he's like bashing mm. superhero movies, and so much of it is like Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, yeah. and boy, I, I get know. major King Comedy vibes from it. I guess you you when you think about it, it pro it kind of does look like a, a mashup of Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. It's totally it, with uh, yeah with uh, and De Niro's the whole talk it. show thing. Hmm. So it, it and and you know uh, it's uh, what's Todd uh, I forget his first name but the the director Phillips Phillips yeah Todd Phillips he 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 like unabashedly is like a Scorsese devotee so it must have no, crushed really him to it. hear that so. <laughs> I'm gonna cleanse our palate from all of that if everyone go to the Dropbox and look at episode 309. Um, this is my last very quick uh, um, random. There's a thing called Ms. Rogers. Oh, no. That is one of the <laughs> ten worst sexy movie and TV oh my God, costumes. Yes. Oh, my God. It's a girl's costume that's super tight, and she's supposed to be Mr. Rogers, and she's got the cat and the king, what's puppets, his face? Hand puppet. Puppet. Like, who comes up with this stuff? That's sexy, okay, Mr. But this Rogers. Is from the ten worst sexy costumes list, it's almost oh, yeah. as bad as last year's handmade sexy handmade. Costume. Oh my god, yes, <laughs> this so is worse. Like, I think it, it's uh, yeah, just because that movie's coming out, they're like, okay, let's uh, make a sexy Mr. Rogers. Well, I put two pictures That's in crazy. the Dropbox too while you're looking. Uh, one is that throne room scene, and one is the ghost flying next to the Falcon. Yeah, yeah. We'll post those. Um, I'm sure they're all over the internet okay. at this point. But yeah. you know who else is awesome? In addition to Ms. Rogers, is Fanboy Collectibles. Ton of stuff uh, out there uh, this week. Iron Studio statues. Um, Thanos, Black Adam, Superman from 1978, Superman, 89, Batman. All really cool and and very affordable. So check those out. Pre-order. A lot of, lot of hot toys up for pre-order. TV's Flash. Uh, That's that, a nice-looking uh, figure. Think, did, 
a very nice looking figure. We we were like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to get it. But then we all looked at the pictures before the show and like, hmm, maybe we need to get that. So re- that looks really cool. Endgame Thor, I guess, Fat Thor, but in his uniform. And then uh, Endgame Hulk with the uh, sort of Iron Man yeah, it's like Smart Hulk thing going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of so, surprised they don't call him Professor Hulk because they have in a bunch of other things. But um, that's it's. Um, so that's interesting. That's that Hulk. I know I've said I only want one Hulk, but that Hulk is probably smaller. Should be interesting. Yeah, I but, think it is probably a little bit smaller. I was actually yeah. uh, emailing with with our friend Troy over at Fanboy today, placing an order. So um, good dude. Did you order? Like you. Did you order Professor Hulk? No, I ordered the the two Mandalorian Hot Toys figures. <laughs> Did you surprised. really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can make that commitment yet, but they do look awesome. They do and look I, really, I, I really good. I trust Favreau. Yeah. So, anyway, check them out, fanboycollectibles.com. Check them online. Check them out at the store in Newtown, Connecticut. Tell them the regular Joe sent you. Okay, so we've covered... Uh, where do you guys want to go next? We're, what we're going to talk about is a couple, two other things. It's... Uh, it's you're, Yep. Go ahead. What are the two things? The DC's TV heading towards the okay. uh, crossover, yep. and then HBO's Watchmen. Okay. Well, we can all jump what into the DC thing about? because we're we're all watching something of it. We um, could do that. Yep. So uh, let's see. Uh, Flash is as of tonight as three episodes, right? Yes. Yep. Arrow's only had one episode. Supergirl has hit three as of last three night. episodes. Also, Batgirl said three as of last night. Batwoman has had Bat three. Woman has had three. Yes. We all keep doing and that. It's interesting on and yeah, off I the know. show. We yeah. all keep doing that. <laughs> well, it's interesting, and I know what, what we're sort of limiting our discussion to is so in December they're doing the crossover that they do every year, but this is I think the scope of this one feels bigger. It's Crisis on Infinite Earth. They sort of preluded the prelude was last year's end of last year's crossover um and i find they are sort of hinting at it to different degrees well i've only i haven't seen obviously you haven't seen tonight's episode of flash but i did see the first two and in the second one they must have said the word crisis 17 times so okay it felt like they were beating over the flash is definitely talking about it yes um i feel arrow is fully immersed in it arrow is fully immersed in it i also find it interesting i kind of expected that dr suresh was going to be like the villain after they were done with uh i'm sorry he's just he's always going to be keep Dr. calling Suresh, him that too <laughs> okay um he's always he, he, to me he struck me as being the villain after like crisis was over and that we're going to use him for the rest of the series so either they're staging or he'll have some kind of involvement in this, but um, yeah, it's it's it's, I don't it's f- interesting. Arrow dove in a lot faster than I expected. In a way, I and did honestly, not expect. What are there eight or ten episodes? And yeah. you know, I was reluctantly. I'm like, oh boy, we're going to get into it. if so. Arrow is fully in the journey of of getting sort of. He's on a scavenger hunt to get to the crisis because he knows he's got a job to do. And if they sort of do that every week and he's d- thrown in completely different situations sort of as he heads into crisis, I think that would be good. That would be a nice a, way. They're ping-ponging him between worlds, okay? Yeah. And and uh, um, I think I was kind of curious on how they were going to do it because in the comics, everything just became white. In this, everything kind of burns up um, as as the world ends, and and um, Barry, so let me you, ask you. you a, let me ask Arrow. you a question. You, you could jump in right now and watch Arrow. You you would it would make enough sense to well, you. Well, that's what I was just going to uh, ask you. If if they're already into it, and in, I usually wait until the crossover officially begins to start watching the other shows. Do I need to start watching Arrow now? It might not I be a bad idea. Can. I think they're going to tie a lot will tie in together. I I. Thought this was actually a really good episode of Arrow. It felt like yeah. it was important and purposeful. I liked what they did, and just I the, re- they really mixed it up. I thought it was so, they really so did a good job. Barry, just to spoil a little bit, and apologize for the user, those of you at home. 
you know, at the beginning of Arrow, he came back after being away five years, okay, and resumed his life in, in Starling City. Well, in here, he comes back, but it's been 12 years, okay? And so, because seven years passed on the, other sh on the show, we, we pick up and we see a very different reality because it's, in, in a lot of ways, what would have happened in the intervening years had he not been there. And some good things and some bad things. You know, his, his sister's dead, but his mother's still alive. So were and, they in the future of where Flash is right now? No, they're in the present day. It's just, like I said, a parallel, it's, it's a parallel universe. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's the so parallel. It, that, the, that's you know, how it, it is the universe it. where Oliver didn't come back from the island seven years ago. And so they brought some characters back and they did some really interesting stuff. Um, uh, I, I like I said, I really liked it. I, I, thought I liked the it. I, I, the future good. stuff we didn't need, but I just hope they don't sort of just get stuck. You don't got a lot of episodes. If he's got a, this mission, because he's fully on the crisis mission, the dude um, <laughs> who's sort of running the show is making him do stuff. So I feel like the crossover is started in his universe. I feel I feel like it has, and that's, that's in his that's show. Why right I want to talk about this because I think that I feel like at the point that Arrow shows up, that you know, like in Flash, shit's going to happen. I mean that's that's I think yeah. he's basically making his way to those other series. Um, right, one I'll thing start, that's I'll start curious that to my rotation. is in Batwoman, which I will say, each episode has gotten better than the one before it. Okay, yeah, I th I think the first one was extremely weak. The second one, not eh, okay, not that great. I think the third one kind of stood on its, on its own for the first point. It's still got some room to go. Um, Kind of a waste of Tommy Elliott, but we'll see him again, I'm sure. Um, it's it's um, it's 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 getting there. Um, it's 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 watchable. It was the barely thing watchable. Is, now it's is, watchable. This is prior to last year's crossover. Still, they're in a timeline which is still because in in last year's crossover, she had already adopted the Batwoman mantle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, and true. Wayne Tower was pretty much fragged inside. Okay, so something's got to happen. Remember when they went there and everything was like trash? That'd be interesting if they really tie that into and and sort of jump forward. Yeah. So and so, she's where uh, she's on Earth One, right? Yes. Supergirl's the only one who's on a different Earth at this moment. Yes. Yeah. I'm saying in the series. Yeah, Black Lightning is a different Earth, and and uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he doesn't show up. I mean, he's in the crossover. No, they said he's in the crossover. He is? Yeah, yeah. I had no interest in seeing him. I got to say too, the 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 um, pictures that they're they're leaking out, like Brandon Ruth in the in the um, Kingdom Come Superman outfit, awesome. Um, seeing Tom Welling. You know, holding oh up a God. Superman suit. That's amazing. It's it's this is yeah. this is going to be great. And you know, we know we're a lot of these are going to be cameos as these worlds blink out one at a time. But I, I yeah, I, I'm I'm psyched. I actually hope we get to see a few new characters in there at least briefly. You know, I think that there's you know, even if they do what Crisis did and they distill everything down to one Earth, there's still different DC operations going on. You know, Titans, I don't expect to be in the same Earth as this when we're done. How um, crazy would it be if they did that? But it, it, but it would be can't very crazy. Because, so, whereas you can't because Batman is sort of in at, right. Bruce Wayne's around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they're doing a good I, I totally watch Arrow. If there's stuff you don't understand. Or you didn't know where it's come from, ask us. But they're definitely... I feel like that is the most fully into the crisis mode right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. You know, I, just as a Flash season, it's been... I feel like it started off in a better place and has been already, in the two episodes I've seen, better than last season. So, yeah. last season wasn't it, that bad. The, the other thing would... The crisis in Flash, though, I think the reason that they mention it every 15 seconds is 
this has been a recurrent theme since the first season. They have known, yeah. you know, they've seen that newspaper where where Flash, you know, vanishes in crisis. I mean, I think it's fair to assume at this point that Oliver will sacrifice himself to save Barry and the time, you know, that will change. But because we know he's gone. But this is I, I'm in, I'm really interested to see this play out. Um, so, yeah. And um, it's it's interesting because it's, you know, they are. Did they do it in December last year? This is coming in December. So, yeah, I just I mean, not, so that gives means we've got like five or six more episodes, and I just hope that the word is not. Yeah, isn't. they're going to take a Thanksgiving break. Oh, that's true. Probably or just a, take a week off, but there's not a lot of episodes left to get to. It's one little, little buried thing that I picked up. Um, the elongated man character in the comics has always had a wife, who's basically is Watson, who he explains everything to, and her name is Sue. Okay, the heiress he's been looking for you know the case that he was away on is named sue so i wonder whether you know we're gonna see him find her and then something i gotta say i know you don't like the character dave but i've liked what they've done with it it's it's yeah they've eliminated him almost fully from yeah but i mean I, i like how they use him and it 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 works so it was um, starting to feel a little bit like they were going to try to create a romance between him and uh, Killer Frost, and it seems like they're I stepping hope back they from do. that. I I <laughs> that's that's marvelously awkward that he has a relationship with one personality and not the other. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. They could have toned down his goofiness last year, and it would have made him a more pal- palatable. And, and I think they I think they have though. They I, did I actually. Yeah. I'm saying they should have started out. I still have my, you know, you know he was just a, a, a goofball. Yeah. And and but. he had a, he had a good moment when he was talking to her and he talked about basically he's the only one there that can relate to her experience because he had his basically had his body taken over and was controlled by the by by brainwave. So, right. um yeah. It's anyways, I I'm I was very pleased with Arrow and I'm enjoying Flash more than I expected I was. I would be. So, yeah. Supergirl's not really touching on it. Um, yep, not yet. Yet, but it's been okay. It's been it's been decent. So I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I think the last thing we're going to talk about. I didn't watch it. HBO's Watchmen. Um. You guys both watched. I'm assuming. I'll throw. Yep. Well, I'll wait till you talk about it, and then I'll throw some numbers at you. All right. Um, well, let, now, maybe I'll start. Go ahead. And then go ahead. Todd, jump in. So I, I've been vocal on this podcast over the years we've been doing it that <clears throat> Watchmen is my all-time favorite graphic novel. Love it. I've read it many, many, many times. Um, I, I enjoyed the movie. It was one of the few things that Zack Snyder's done that I've really enjoyed, and it was not for everybody because it was a super faithful retelling of, of the comic book almost to a fault. Um, this is something totally different than that. Um, while it, it feels like that universe in some ways, it is a totally different thing. It's not a retelling of the comic at all. They touch on some of the characters from it. There's a handful of characters that are, are crossed over and then they, they reference others. But, um, I feel like they've done what they've done with Westworld. They've made it almost unrecognizable to the original and, I'm going to keep watching it because I'm hoping that it's going to pay off. But so far, I, based on this first episode, I am really not enjoy, not loving it. I, I will say we're probably not far off on this, Barry. But I'm. It is. It's a sequel. It's set in the. It's set in the future. It's set very clearly in that same world. Okay, um, and probably a sequel to the comic more than the yes, movie. not the movie. Because there were some things that they changed pretty dramatically in the movie. Were very, especially... Which were in keeping with the comic. Yeah. But, like, you know, the, the image of Mount Rushmore with Nixon's face on it is, is just really disturbing. But... Um, I love, Well, so, Dave, Robert Redford has been president for 30 years in this universe. Yeah. After the Nixon. Robert Redford? Yeah. Yeah. He's not in it. But they talk about President Redford and uh, Redford rations instead of reparations. 
Yeah. So they basically the first episode is is all about race, and it's become like a race. Uh, you know. Okay, so here's the thing. thing which okay, I just really disturbs me that that's where they went with it. Yeah, but I mean, it, I mean, they start with the Tulsa race riots from the twenties, nineteen twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Okay. And it now appears that the hangman character, who is a historical character in the Watchmen story, he wasn't part of the Watchmen story, but he was one of the past heroes is probably the Lou Gossett character yep. and was probably that child. Lou no, Gossett he was Jr. that child. He had the piece of paper at the end. That's that the what I'm saying. Wrote. Yeah, he is okay. that child. But if he's the hangman, who wasn't even actually a character in this, you know, who was, like I said, a character in the past in the story who was referenced, okay, but not seen even in the context of the story as it was being told, that's deep shit. I mean, that's well, and, like, and that's what I was actually just going to go to because, like I said, I, I know this universe really well. I've read it many, many times, and I love yeah. it. But I had to go read an article that was written after the fact to point out all the things that I missed. And if that's how deep they are in this thing, then they're missing the freaking point. Like, and you know, as much as I used to really love Damon Lindelof and and what he did on Lost and some of the other things that I had seen him do, like this seems to be his mo now. It's like go super deep for this to confuse you for the hardcore fans and it's like who are the hardcore fans i consider myself in that boat and i I read one of these all the spoilers you or or all the easter eggs you missed and i'm like holy crap i missed a lot but it's because they're these tiny little esoteric details it very very esoteric details i caught a lot of them and i was just like really seriously um the okay they're in tulsa okay why, how did the owl ship get there? And did they really just frag the owl ship just for that one no, scene? No, there's multiple owl ships because it was one, in the, one of the scenes they had them hovering over the city. So it's not the owl ship. They had that? I thought they were, those were Zeppelins hovering over the city. They were those too, but there was a sequence where they had like multiple owl ships. So it was. Okay. Okay. I miss, I missed that. I got to go back. That's good. I feel, I feel better about that because I didn't, I, that was one of my favorite things. Um, yeah, this is messed. Um, it's interesting that they've picked this because obviously they need to sort of get something that's going to try to fill the shoes of Game of Thrones. It's not going to, but this, this, is this, not, is sound, this to me is sounds, so much more Westworld than Game of Thrones. Like in, oh, in it that definitely it sounds is. super, and, and I gotta say, super niche is, in the world of a super, of super niche, you know? It, it, and that's what I'm saying. There's deep mythology that people can get into with this and they can like look for the Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff. And I, I guess I see what they're kind of doing. But that's that. like 10 people. How many people are, are a million people. No, I'm saying, but okay, a gajillion people went out and bought George R. R. Martin's books after starting to watch Game of Thrones. Okay. Do you think a gajillion people are going to watch? I, I think the sales of the Game Watchmen graphic novel are going to spike as much now as they did before the movie came out. Okay, I think that. I think there's people looking for that thing that they, the little cultish thing they yeah, want to get into. About that, I'll, I don't think enough. I'll give you some numbers. I, I, I don't think enough. Live telecast. Was watched by eight hundred thousand viewers. Um, the all across all HBO platforms, so you know, I guess yep. on demand and yep. whatever now and go was watched by one point five million uh, people viewers. All right, so I'm gonna point- I'm gonna bet right now that those numbers are high compared to next week. They're claiming that was a win for HBO, which I found very odd. Um, the premiere, not the finale. I, it's a different animal. The premiere of this season's Game of Thrones was watched by 17 million people. Right. Yeah. But but I when, mean, you, when you take Conan Game of Thrones... Conan on a given night is a million people. Take Game of Thrones out of the equation. What else has HBO had that has done two and a half million viewers? No, no, no. Those are an additive. Those are... The 800 is in the 1.5. Oh, okay. What has what HBO had that's done 1.5? Uh, I million? don't know what I don't know what their numbers are doing. I just and, yeah, and I, I don't I don't either. The, uh, but the, my guess is because there's not another show on HBO that I even watch or care about. I'm guessing that they probably, uh, except for maybe they've got a couple of shows that really slant towards the female audience right now, like 
It's Big Little Lies, I think that's them, or is that another yeah, network? Yeah. I don't know. They have shows like that. That is them. Um, yeah. but no, I'm just saying, I just think like, I, like in the same way that I, I was money so it. eager to watch Westworld and I was so disappointed that it was so hard to follow. I feel like they've done the same thing with this. Like they could have made this in a world where the boys exists on Amazon and yeah. the boys in a lot of ways takes a lot of liberties from the Watchmen. This could have been a lot more straightforward and hit a lot more, uh, of the target audience. than I think this is going to hit. And the boys isn't simple. I mean, it's straightforward, more or less. But yeah, look but at in that's, the opening that's episode, that's by, by the comparison. end of the first episode of the boys, you knew everything you needed to know about that world. Yeah, the end of I this ep- of the first episode of this, it was there was a race riot in the twenties. In the modern day, whenever this takes place, police wear masks because police were being attacked in their homes so now they wear masks so that they can shield themselves and people don't know who they are they have to have their guns released by somebody back at the precinct if they want to use their guns and there's like a movement that's kind of taking its clues from the kkk that the police are fighting and i don't know how any of this ties into the watchman like that yeah that's it's, the thing it's it's, it's weird the i mean there are places around the world where police do wear special squads of police do wear masks and for exactly that reason um, well, we've we've seen three people in odd. the police it force seems that really are odd to couple those two things together though give them anonymity and then disarm them um that, that right that but was then really you've got odd. three people working on the police force who are wearing costumes but don't appear to have any type of superpowers of any kind they're just highly trained and in more of like ninja type costumes than the rest of the police. I don't know. You know, again, it's hard to sometimes judge something based on one episode, but how was Don Johnson? What, no, what he do you died mean? Like in the first wearing episode? costumes other than they killed him. Other than <laughs> he did. Oh yeah. And they've said definitively, he's not coming back. It was one and done. They killed him in the first episode. And they spent a Spoiler. lot of time on him. Yes. And he was the main character of the first episode. He was, and they killed he him. was like, they kind of, yeah, it's, it's weird, but I'm glad I do have no intention of watching it. I, I didn't take those two other characters as being as having powers. I took them as being like the equivalent of undercover. And Maybe. and they would just wear you know, they would basically they could walk out in the street, pull their masks off and be anonymous. Right. They make they make many of these like special detectives have covers for like one of them owns a bakery. Because they don't want people yeah. to know what her day job is of being a police officer. The oddest character in this, Dave, and you, you, you'll laugh at this, the guy who controls whether or not you can have your gun accessed or not, they call him Panda, and he's wearing a panda suit. He, he's no Well, reason. not a panda suit. He's just really wearing a furry panda head. And it's <laughs> why, why? Why is the man I wearing a Damon panda Lindelof head? I think Damon is like, we used to defend him. I think... Everything he makes is just sort of like, let's just make it really complicated to, to prove you're stupid if you don't get it. I don't know. I, I think this is, I think this is lost. I think this is, I think they're trying to find something they can generate back buzz and they can get people like enmeshing themselves with. And I think it's a miss. It's not going to happen. Too niche. Yeah. I'll tell it's you, uh, disappointing. Is, really disappointing. To, to so I'm hoping. Anyone that's, anyone that saw the boys this summer. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, we were talking about that while you were away. Um, yeah, you this, stepped this away. This is, you know, that superheroes gone bad, done well. This is just, yeah. I, and I'm, I may feel differently two or three episodes in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch a few more at least. Me too. But you know is, what? Is if, this... if it doesn't get better, I'm going to grab my hard cover copy of The Watchmen off the bookshelf, and I'm just going to reread that instead of spending another yeah. like ten hours watching this. If it doesn't pan out. So the I'm only just give up so on far it. the only we know that we saw Doctor Manhattan, and we For saw ten we seconds. Saw, yeah, but I'm saying that could also have been archival footage, and we saw Conrad Velt. So um, Adrian, Adrian Velt, Adrian yeah. Velt, the, the Ozymandias. So yes. um, yeah, who seems to have either robots or clones or something as servants that are just yeah. I think those are robots. Very odd. They're very very odd. I will say he looks more like Adrian Velt than, you know, yeah, than, you know, an older Adrian Velt than the guy that played. Yeah, him the, the movie. guy that played him in the movie was probably not great casting, but yeah. good casting. But 
I, I, it's just so out there. Like, and the, the Watchmen is a little out there, but I don't know. I I'm, I'll give it like one or maybe two more episodes tops if it doesn't dramatically catch my you know imagination more. I'm just done. Yeah, I, I'm okay. going to go with three as the new pilot. I think you got to give it three episodes and then see. And and um, but I should be there, like squared, bullseye, dead center t- demographic. Oh for my this. god, yes, Barry. If if if, you, if you're <laughs> wriggling on the hook at this point, it's yeah. like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So anyway, so let us know if you've watched that or the DC. Let us know your thoughts, please. Email them. We can email them, but Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, you know the places. Put them um, in an envelope and mail them to Dave at Dave Pisani. <laughs> P.O. One, two, Box three. 11792, yeah. Fairfield, Connecticut. Whatever the zip is. No, that's not true. Um, but, you know, you could podcast at regularjoes.com. You could email them. We'll take that. Or uh, Facebook, Instagram. Let us know. Um, let us know what you think of Rise of Skywalker. We've already had it? some someone feedback was... on our on our Facebook page. So. Yeah, on Facebook, someone was bitching about it. Was it Mamma Nooster again? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. He was giving you crap about not knowing how to pronounce his screen name the other day. Sorry. Oh, was he? Yeah. Uh, I didn't see that. Sorry, I didn't see that. Who was complaining about their they lost interest in the franchise? Dude, come on, get back in. JJ's going to land this ship. I'm telling you. I, that was me. <laughs> okay. No, it wasn't you. But someone on Facebook. Um, so Barry, who was that? I'm, I'm looking. Just vamp for a second while I look it up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I he's gonna land this star destroyer like he's landing it in Endor. No, hopefully <laughs> yes, not. Yeah. I am. I am really, really uh, excited to see it. I it was know, Chad. Surprised. Chad Wallace sure. was the one who was saying that. Oh, yeah, uh, you usually he will not see this opening so night. He this. will not see. He's planning on seeing it, but not not uh, not not even seeing it opening weekend. Is what he says. Don't let the Last Jedi ruin this for you. I think that's going to be a blip. It's just going to be one bad thing uh, out in the universe of Star Wars. It's you know you can't. If you've you know, been in thinking, this as long as we have, and I'm assuming most of the people that listen to us are within 10 years of our age, us. like, you, this has been a part of us since we were kids. You have to see it through to the end. And then, if you're disappointed, please rant all you want. But to not to, to not see it, because Ryan Johnson, you know, just don't don't go there. Okay, Great so, so here's, the, here's, the other, here's the other way of looking at this. Okay. The they have got four outs or three outs, two strikes. <laughs> Definitely, in my opinion, two strikes. Okay, but their best no, hitter is two, up at bat. T- Todd so, is using yeah. a sports reference. I'm trying to use a sports metaphor. Long, I just I, I already messed it up once. But I'm saying the best stri- the best wait, hitter they've got is up at bat. Okay, and. We got a we got a good shot of him. They're trying to make on. a touchdown from the free throw line right now. That's right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Of him making a touchdown <laughs> from the free free throw line. We have every chance of that happening. So, All right, so let me ask you a question. That, that, I'll use this as my la- pull me back from the edge there, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use this as my last thought. So, um, there are people, believe it or not, who have not seen Star Wars. Um, Mark's girlfriend's never seen it, and. I'm like, hmm, she could be a good experiment if, if I could get, like, 16 hours and make her watch something. But <laughs> I would, if it was me, this is how I would make have someone watch Star Wars if they were open to it. I, w- I wouldn't show them Solo just because it just doesn't really need to fit in the continuity. I'd go Rogue One, Star Wars, Empire, go back to 1, 2, 3... Come back to six, seven. I would. There's no reason to have eight, and then see nine. Any thoughts on that? I I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I I had a student, one of my students, tell me that actually say her boyfriend had never seen Star Wars, and she wasn't sure that 
<laughs> she could have a boyfriend who had never seen Star Wars. And I said, just to be clear, it, it would be that is a person that there is hope for them. If you have a boyfriend who's seen and does not like Star Wars, there's nah, nothing you can problem. do. Okay. Yeah. So it's really just the uninitiated. So. Well, you know, one of the theater changes doing a 27 hour marathon that ends with the new movie. And, you know, Oof. for half a second, Josh was like, we should do that. I'm like, no, we definitely shouldn't do that. But yeah. I kind of committed to him that, and we'll have to figure out the right pacing, but in the days and maybe weeks leading up to, we're going to rewatch all the movies. And we were actually talking about what order should we watch them in. Okay. See, I just would love to be in someone's head who Dude. hasn't seen it before. And yeah, you, uh, yeah, you know, I, exactly. Yeah. I, I like I did. The, I rewatched every single um, Marvel film before Endgame, and and uh, um, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> well, but this is not nearly the commitment that the Marvel movies are. That was yeah, just, I know that was that was that was crazy. There's only what there's. there's if you really include Rogue 10, One and Solo, there's only I don't think you need ten two movies. Them. Yeah. Anyway, any other last thoughts? Yeah, so Todd it was it was thought. Matthew Matson, and and he said that because you never read the Iliad or the Odyssey, you didn't know how to pronounce his screen name, but maybe you'd learn based on the new Tropical Storm, which was Tropical Storm Nestor. So it's, I guess, Mama Nestor is his screen name. Okay, okay. Well, you don't know. I did read that, but it was in high school, so it's it's a long time ago. <laughs> it's, it's under a lot of other stuff at this point. Yeah. 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 Todd, you have the last thought? Yeah, I just want to say um uh one of our good friends, Dustin Clark, got some bad news last week. We just want to say, Dustin, we're thinking of you. You're you're very much in our thoughts and, and Absolutely. Hundred uh, yeah. percent. And we will continue to check in on you, see how you're doing, but we are thinking of you. Absolutely. Yep. And we do appreciate you reaching out and and you listening and, and uh you know Happy that you're a part of our family. And if there's anything we can yep. do to help you, message us and we'll take care of it. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. We're here for you, bud. Great. Next, well, next week we're going to do a race. So then Rhode Island Comic Con. Yeah. Don't forget, we're there. If anyone's going, let us know. Uh, the first through the third, I guess. Yes. In Rhode Island. No, be, believe it or not. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. So... Thanks for listening. Thanks Thanks for for listening. listening.